don't call it a comeback, but Nvidia and Intel just teamed up. Actually, well, Nvidia bought part of Intel. Huge news here, we gotta talk about it. Is AMD AM done, or is this all hype? Boys, let's talk. So yeah, I woke up this morning to Intel stock being 30% up in the pre-market. I was kinda confused what's going on. Um, disclaimer, I bought Intel shares at 19.91 a share. A few months back, I put in seven grand, uh, bought the dip on Intel, because I said, you know what? I believe in this company, it's American made. I think with the new administration coming forward, this is going to be a good buy. Just disclaimer, I am an Intel shareholder. I uh, do not own AMD or Nvidia or anything like that. But yeah, I was pretty surprised after seeing this news. I saw the article, Nvidia and Intel X were teaming up and basically what's going to happen is Intel IP will be used on Nvidia parts. Essentially, Nvidia will be, will be buying Intel CPUs directly from Intel and putting them on package with their GPUs for data center. Um, not only that, but the same will be done for Intel when it comes to GPUs. This is kind of a mutual thing where Nvidia will be buying Intel CPUs chiplets, not complete CPUs, but chiplet dies from Intel and putting them with their GPUs and data center, where meanwhile in consumer, Intel will be buying NVIDIA RTX GPU chiplets and putting it with their CPUs for consumer. Absolutely insane stuff. Now the very first thing that crossed my mind when I heard this was Arc is dead. That sucks. Intel Arc, right when it started getting better, seems like it's not gonna survive this. Well. I have more to talk about that later because there is one thing that might actually keep ARC in the running. But first, I kind of want to address what all is going on here. I listened to uh, the NVIDIA announcement, um, their earning, it wasn't an earnings call, but kind of like their public announcement with Jensen Wong and Lip Bhutan. And I, it kind of gave me a better idea of exactly what's going on here. Like I said, NVIDIA will be buying Intel CPU chiplets putting it in their data center. And the reason NVIDIA really wants to do this is they want a strong x86 solution to scale up their GPUs with NVLink. So if you don't know, NVLink is uh, NVIDIA's proprietary uh, design software hardware connection that's basically allows them to scale up hundreds of GPUs and it act as a single GPU for AI. Cluster the graphics dies together, cluster, cluster the memory, and this really allows you to do absolutely insane things with huge models and whatnot. Currently, the only way to really do this reliably with NVLink is on ARM CPUs with NVIDIA. And Jensen, he knows a lot of people only want x86, and he's saying, we need your IP, we need to integrate your CPU with our silicon on package in order to add this NVLink connection, right? You, without our help, you can't add the NVLink connection to your CPUs. Because what's happening right now is uh, Intel will sell systems to people like Supermicro, and Supermicro will sell like a Sapphire Rapids or Emerald Rapids, whatever Rapids they're on right now, system, I think it's Granite Rapids, and that will have PCIe slots where people insert NVIDIA GPUs. And that's old tech, that's yesterday's old man technology. Today we're using silicon interconnects, fiber optics to connect things, you know. Um, Intel using is using like Ethernet and PCIe and Jensen's basically saying like that's not good enough for what we're trying to do. So basically he wants a CPU x86 chiplet to put with his NVIDIA, you know, Rubin or uh, Feynman GPUs to accelerate those and to scale them up to basically be able to run things like ChatGDP and the CPU is just gonna be making sure all these GPUs can be connected together. That's basically the CPU's job. So actually this is a big win for Nvidia too, guys. Now I think Intel gets better deal out of this whole thing for now, whereas Nvidia gets a long-term strategy. Just staying on Nvidia for a second and what Nvidia is getting out of this deal, Nvidia, a lot of people are saying, well, Nvidia's scared. They're scared of AMD, what AMD can do. And at first I heard that and I'm like, that's code. They don't care. But I think long-term Nvidia was kind of scared of what AMD was gonna be able to do with that x86 architecture. Um, they could address a market Nvidia didn't, didn't have the power to address. And what it seems like to me Nvidia is doing in this situation is putting their hand in every single consumer and um, client 
market in every single position to where if something blows up, when it comes to AI, when it comes to anything computing related, Nvidia will have a hand in that market and they'll see the gains. They do not want to be like Intel. They do not want to end up like Intel did where Intel, they focused on just basically CPUs and data center. They didn't focus on AI. They didn't focus on mobile and they missed all those waves, right? Nvidia wants to be integrated in mobile, consumer, data center, everything. So if any one of those blows up, they will receive benefits from that. Basically ensuring any pr uh, progress in computing, they will be the benefactors of. Great strategy, it pretty much prevents them from being ending up like Intel if they're always trying to innovate. And if they invest in every single thing that is available, if something blows up, they will be there to reap the benefits. Basically, that's it. I can see why Nvidia really wanted this. AMD having that unique opportunity with x86 and actually decent AI, machine learning, graphics, you know, combining those two. You know, I, I could see Nvidia just being like, no, we don't want AMD to win that. So yeah, basically is the question, you know, is AM done? AMD done? <laughs> I think it's gonna be harder for AMD. In the short term, this doesn't mean a lot for AMD. AMD's fine in the short term. In the long term, AMD's facing an upwards battle. AMD's a different company than they were five, 10 years ago. So who knows what AMD has in the oven cooking. They could straight up just be that good. It, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying you know they can't compete at all. They could be that good to where Intel and AMD, Intel and Nvidia have to team up to beat them, but personally, my opinion, I think AMD is going to be in the data center on the decline for a little while after this. I don't see them coming out and beating a team up with Intel and Nvidia. To be honest with you guys, when it comes to consumer, they've gotten that mind share. And I think it's gonna take a while for Intel, even with Nvidia's help, to uh, take away some of that mind share from AMD. But when it comes to market share, sure, Intel will probably keep their market share and stop AMD from gaining um, market share and you know laptops and things like that. Pretty much stops AMD's growth, I think, for consumer and data center with this announcement. Personally, look into the future. Now, today, AMD should be fine. A few years from now, AMD might be in a worse spot. Just saying. That's what Nvidia gets out of this deal. Honestly, Nvidia is just making investments that is going to secure them a spot. Uh, will actually secure their spot in the top semiconductor manufacturing company, right? Because I think Intel, you know, with their fabs and all that, Nvidia making these deals with them while they're low right now, it's putting in a good word and it's making a friend of a company that's, let's just be honest, probably going to be one of the greats here in the next five, 10 years. And I don't know, I, I think Nvidia, this is a really good deal for them in the long term, actually better than the deal it is for Intel. Now, and let's get, <laughs> now let's talk about Intel because in the short term, this deal for Intel is absolutely phenomenal. They're looking for customers for 14A and with this call, conference call, they made it abundantly clear that Intel Foundry Services is not directly involved in this deal. Nvidia is hand, head over heels for TSMC right now. They love TSMC. They do not want to burn any bridges with TSMC. And that makes sense. Nvidia wants to have their hand in every market. They want to have ability to get into Intel Foundry services if they need to, but they also want uh, TSMC because they have the best nodes right now, right? And what Intel's planning to do with this is basically just address all the gaps they have. Intel does not have a hold in the AI market at all. If they can get GPU chiplets from Nvidia, that solves their problem. Their CPUs will sell like hotcakes if they're attached to the most uh, wanted mm, computer part and computer accessory out there right now, right? It, it, their CPUs don't have to be the best, and guys, I think they're gonna be pretty good with these new nodes, but they don't have to be the best if they're packaged with NVIDIA. For, so for Intel, this is a huge win. And when it comes to consumer, Intel, they're basically saying, we are going to package our CPU cores on consumer, something like you know a laptop like Lunar Lake, uh, we're going to package our CPU cores with an RTX GPU over Fovro Silicon Interconnect technology. And basically our iGPUs are gonna be Nvidia now. <laughs> and that's huge, basically eliminates AMD from the equation when it comes to APUs. As long as these things are priced relatively, they could pri be priced higher than AMD APUs and still outsell them. Um, it, it pretty much eliminates that idea um, where AMD is better in in uh, APU graphics, that's not gonna be the case anymore. And it gives Intel competitiveness in consumer, low-end, 
um, with APUs, and then in the higher end, they're already getting paired with RTX GPUs. So it's just gonna be the premier choice. And it might be locking AMD out of uh, potential collaborations with NVIDIA when it comes to you know, laptops. So like in the future, it might be harder to find an AMD CPU paired with an RTX GPU um, on, in the laptop space. I don't know if Intel's gonna ask NVIDIA to do that or something, but I could definitely see that happen. Now the question everyone's waiting for, Intel Arc, is Intel Arc dead? Did the Moore's Law is dead prophecy come true? Has it been foretold? And guys, let me first say that Moore's Law is dead did not see this coming. He, I don't think he ever said any sort of collaborations with Intel and Nvidia, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, he's probably gonna find some way to spin this deal as it being like amazing for AMD, which let me tell you right now, this, this deal is really bad for AMD in the long term, in the short term, it's unclear how it's really gonna affect them. Um, with Intel Arc, I, I just, I want you guys to understand that if Intel was smart like an NVIDIA, like Nvidia is, they would keep Intel Arc because it is, uh, it gives them leverage, right? Nvidia's maintaining leverage. They even came on the record and said, we're keeping our ARM chips in our back pocket. We're still gonna come out with ARM chips to serve every market possible. Now, if Intel was smart, they would keep Arc around because they would also be able to serve more markets. Um, there's no deals, as far as I know, for discrete GPUs when it comes to uh, desktop, you know. We do have Arc discrete GPUs. When it comes to laptops and integrated GPUs, it seems like Intel shifting away from using Arc in, um, you know, the APUs. And I, what I have to say about this is, there's already some products planned like Panther Lake that are going to have Arc and obviously those are going to come out. And what I would say to Intel is if you wanna maintain that flexibility you first imagined with your tile-based system, you need to keep Arc around because these NVIDIA chips probably aren't gonna be cheap. And if you wanna come out with something like a i3 or an i5 with that integrated GPU, well, I think Arc would still be fit that great, right? It doesn't have to game super hard. It can have great media engines for editing and watching videos. And I think that's where Arc is gonna go to where it's probably just gonna be a very low power option like the UHD graphics. And we're probably gonna degress back into that when it comes to integrated solutions. And even on desktop, I feel like they're gonna keep Arc graphics around for that. I don't see them going out to Nvidia and saying like, hey, we want to buy your RTX chips for display out um, for our desktop chips because that's gonna raise the price significantly and gamers aren't using these iGPUs for actual gaming on desktop. They're going to be using them for just display outs, right? And office work. So in my opinion, Intel's biggest market is are those people that are buying their CPUs and not using them to game, but using them for office work, for display out, for laptops, for um, you know, word processing and things like that. And all of those chips run Intel uh, basic graphics, right? So it's a huge market and if they give that up, that would be horrible. So I don't see them totally axing Arc. I see them keeping it as kind of like a display out, low cost option, um, even opposed to Nvidia. Now I'd be surprised if they just come out and say, Nvidia is covering all graphics here from here on out because if they do that, they really, limit themselves for future products and they're basically going to be dependent solely on Nvidia. And that's not good because Nvidia kind of screws over their partners. I don't know if Intel knows that or not, but yeah. <laughs> Last thing I want to talk about is Intel Foundry service. Nvidia, uh, Jensen and Libbutan was, they were asked repeatedly in these questions on their, comp, their uh, discussion today about Intel Foundry services. Like, will these chips be using you know, Intel 18A, 14A, 12A, I don't know if even that's a thing. Um, you know, future nodes, and, and, and Jensen just kind of cleared the debate. He came out and said, no, we're using TSMC. TSMC is our biggest partner. And honestly, he, he didn't say this directly, but he, this is pretty much what he said. He's like, they're better. They, they, they're, they're swift. They don't really have as much delays. And their, their nodes are just reliable. So no, we're gonna stick with them. And Lip Bhutan, he, he agreed. And the thing is, I, I mean, I agree as well, but they did not say they would never use Intel Foundry services. Intel Foundry services for NVIDIA is a backup and it's there waiting for them when they need it. It's kind of like NVIDIA is that girl that you've had a crush on and Intel Foundry services is you. 
and she's just waiting for her boyfriend to dump her and then you'll be there to kind of help her pick up the pieces. Kind of, I don't know, something like that. Um, when it comes to Intel and their ambitions for uh, Intel Foundry services and their new nodes, I think they're looking at 18A as their CPU node. It seems like it has less density for GPU, but for high performance, clock speeds, things like that, it's going to be a really great node for CPUs. And here's the thing, guys. NVIDIA may not be building their GPUs on an Intel node, but their CPUs, they will be, because they'll be Intel CPUs. So whether you guys know it or not, NVIDIA will be buying Intel Silicon, right? They just won't be making their designs on it. Intel will make CPU designs on Intel Silicon, 18A, 14A if it happens, and send it to NVIDIA. NVIDIA will buy that and pair it with their GPUs. So guys, I mean, that's it. That's it right there, right? Um, it doesn't really matter if NVIDIA uses Intel Foundry for their GPUs because they're already going to be using Intel Foundry for their CPUs, their x86 CPUs, because they will be Intel. So to answer the question about Intel Foundry services, um, yeah, NVIDIA will be using it, as far as I know, for Intel CPUs. When it comes to GPUs, not yet. Um, they wanna see it play out, and I don't think NVIDIA wants to take a risk of committing to something like that when TSMC is working for them right now. Just my thoughts, guys. So yeah, this news absolutely blew me away. I We've all heard the rumors for like six months now or so of NVIDIA and Intel teaming up. You know, it seemed kind of far-fetched, maybe too good to be true, but here it is. And I gotta say, uh, for consumers, I'm a little worried. I don't think this is a great thing for consumers in the long term, in the short term. We're gonna get great products out of this, great APUs. And I gotta say, guys, the performance of uh, computing is APUs. NVIDIA, they've discovered with their their um, data center GPU platform, all their soldered GPU, CPU combos, that prepackaged um, equipment is so much better than modular equipment. They make huge margin, 70% margin on this stuff. And yeah, it's just it's, it's just the way the industry is going, guys. They're, they're trying to get rid of modularity. They're going to go to soldered parts and huge margins and I think we're going to an APU future. This 5090 that I picked up for two grand, it's gonna look silly in five to 10 years, guys, because there's going to be APUs that are beating it for less money that are using half the power. And you might not believe me, but it's true, guys. And the thing is, 32 gigs of VRAM may sound like a lot on a graphics card now, but with the AI future we have, it's, it's gonna be pennies, man. It's just gonna be pebbles compared to what we have um, these new APUs are gonna have hundreds of gigabytes of VRAM, and it's gonna make my 5090 look silly. 600 watt monster with 32 gigs of VRAM. Yeah, it, it's, that's where the future is going, guys. It's going to unified computing, and I'm excited for it. So look forward to an Intel CPU with an RTX GPU running DLSS and also APO Plus at the same time. I don't know. Uh, I cannot wait till Moore's Law's Dead reaction comes out to this. I can't wait for him to say it. he was right about Intel Arc GPUs being canceled when really he had no idea this deal was coming. But what do you guys think of this deal? I'm really excited to hear your comments in the comment section below. I'm actually doing a live stream tonight. I'm gonna build a computer on stream. So go ahead and check that out. But overall, this deal is kind of crazy. We have to see how it plays out in the next few years. But essentially, Intel Arc is going to be a shadow of its former self, I kind of think. Um, if Intel is smart, they would still have some discrete GPUs in the pipeline just in case NVIDIA leaves them high and dry. Because let's be real, guys, if Arc was improving at the pace it has been improving for the past few years, and within you know the next five years, they would at least be beating Radeon when it comes to uh, overall performance and um, feature set and probably market share. So. I think NVIDIA found a chance to not only cover more markets than they had before, but also squash a future competitor, and they did it. They're, they are truly 10 steps ahead of every other company out there, and they really, they're really forward thinking. So maybe that's Jensen Wong, maybe it's just NVIDIA as a whole, I don't know. But guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Silicon State, the master of tech. Ever review every spec he's on deck from GPUs to CPUs, he knows it all. No question too big, no detail too small. He's got the knowledge, he's got the skill. When he drops his take, the haters stand still. Fanboys can cry, but they can't deny. Silicon stakes truth cuts through the lie.